So here we have a ball that has dropped vertically downwards from rest. Ignore air friction. The ball attains a velocity of V after it has traveled a vertical distance of 2Y. When the ball has traveled a vertical distance of 8Y, what would the velocity be? Oh, that's quite a cool one. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at situation. Oh, I think I know what we can do. Let's look at situation one. Ball attains a velocity of V after it has traveled 2Y. Okay, so we know that it's traveled 2Y and we know that it starts from rest. Kevin, how do you know that? Guys, it says starts from rest. Okay, um, and then the final velocity is uh, V. So that's just the final velocity. Excellent. Now we're going to go draw a picture for the next scenario, which now uh, the initial velocity would also be zero. And this distance is 8y. And we need to go and calculate um, what is the final velocity. So what I would do, this is definitely equations of motion type of stuff because it's an object that's just falling. Um, so I would definitely use one of my equations of motion. And I wouldn't use the equation of motion with time. Why? Well, because they don't give us any time. I would rather use the one that uses velocities and distances or displacements. So I would probably use this one over here. Now, please do not get upset with me. Some of you might use a G over there and some of you might use a Y over there. It doesn't matter. They do not care about that in the exams. So yeah. I'm going to use that formula for the first one, and I'm going to use this one, the same formula for the second one. And I'm just going to try to see how things are going to work. So if I use it for this one, um, what I would find out is that V, that's the final velocity, equals to zero, because that's the original velocity, plus two. Now, of course, we can go for acceleration in if we want, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sort of leave it out. Why? Because remember, when we're making a little comparison like this, um, it doesn't really need to be filled in because it's a constant in both of them. It's a constant in both. So when we're doing these type of multiple choice questions, um, you could leave that one out. So I'm just gonna leave it out completely. You can fill it in as 9.8 if you want. It won't change anything. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as a. Um, and then the delta x is 2y, okay? And then I'm just going to go simplify this a little bit as um, 0 plus, this will become 4ay. Oh, there's meant to be a squared here, squared, like that. And so what I'm going to now do is just take the square root, and so v would be equal to the square root of 4ay, okay? Let's just move this up. We're nearly done, guys. Almost, almost done. All right. And so if you had to go work, um, if you, we know that the square root of four is a two. So I'm going to put that in the front. And that's an A. Remember, that's an A, hey? Not a nine, it's an A. That's A, Y. Excellent. Now I'm going to go do the exact same thing with the red one. So we're going to go V squared. Oh, no, we don't know what the final velocity of this one is. Hey, so we're going to go VF. Let's call it VF. The initial velocity is zero. Um, A, I'm just going to leave it as A. Now the distance is 8Y. Okay, there we go. So then we're going to go VF squared equals to zero plus 16AY. And then I'm going to go VF squared equals to 16AY. I'm going to take the square root now. Oh, this is beautiful. And then with the square root of 16 is four. And then the square root of a y, I don't know. Now, what you do is you look at these two answers and you try to see what is the relationship. So how much, how much faster is this one compared to this one? Well, this one is two a y. This one is four a y. So it means that um, this one's velocity is double, it's double this velocity. And so the answer should be C, which is 2V.